spooky scary. Last time. <laughs> Fucking god, piece of shit, damn it, motherfuckers. Let's keep going. Hey dudes, what's going on? Lush Seal here, and I am back with some more Outlast. But, I'm sure you've noticed already, um, my mic doesn't match my webcam. So, the reason for this is because I am doing post commentary. Basically means I... I fucked up and, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm watching the video and, and commentating over it after. Anyway, um, the reason why I fucked up was because I, uh, in Audacity, um, which is what I used to record my mic, I, I did all the effects, what, normalize and equalization, and then I was meant to export it so that I actually had the recording. But I didn't do that, and I just closed, closed Audacity. Automatically pressed no to saving any changes. And then straight away realized what the fuck I had done. And I was like, oh shit, yo. So, I was kind of pissed off about that. But I, at the same time, still had uh, my gameplay. Which you can see right here. Um, yeah, I'm about to jump over a giant gap. So that's exciting. Um, but... Still annoyed at myself for doing that. So I just made the smith. I don't know. I, this is the first time I've done one of these post post commentaries. Um. For, oh, oh yeah, I fell through a hole. Ah, <laughs> uh, that surprised me when I did it. And there's a person over there. Oh shit, man. Can I watch this full screen on my recording? That'd be a thing. That'd be nice. Um. No, I don't think I can. Or if I can, I don't know how. But that's. Wait, 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 what is this? Video preview? Yeah, I'm watching it on, uh, on, uh, my, uh, editing software, so that's the thing as well. Anyway, back to Outlast. Um, so, so yeah. This portion, this recording, I think, was a lot of, um, there was one part that I kind of vaguely remember, and that will be coming up soonish. Uh, I don't know how soon now. Um, but the rest of it, I didn't really remember from watching my playthrough from watching other people's playthroughs of the game um, which I think was handy for me um, yeah so that so so yeah I, I it was good because I got scared and shit um, and as always my face is itchy um, I just want to scratch my face is there so he, so here we are walking through a place Oh yeah, here I thought I saw a um, like eyes peeking through there, but it's just like the outside. Okay, a document, and there is thunder outside. Um, I'm going to summarize the document. Uh, okay, so this document is basically about some dude, um, diary of Shirley Pierce, apparently. Um, they, I think it's a she, because where I think we're in the female warden. Um, kept waking up, whatever, to more cuts and shit, and didn't remember where they came from. But the doctors did something, and then she's all like, "Yo, dog, I gotta, I gotta trust the doctors, yo. Um, that they only mean well, and with the help of the government men who joined the staff, blah blah. Yeah, government joined, and I don't know, shit's fucked, because you know, outlast. Closing that now. Um, I continue on my quest to progress further through the game. When I notice a door that I just came from, so I go to the other door, and it's locked. Maybe that wasn't the door I just came through. I don't remember. I played this like a few hours ago, and I don't remember what the fuck was going on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the spooky wall right in me. That actually freaked me out, um, as you can see there. And then I um, went the way that it came from. Um, there weren't any batteries at that camera, and I was like, God damn it, I won't complete the game with ten batteries. I don't think I said that there, now. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I saw the arrow and was like, but I haven't explored over here, so naturally, I explored over here. And basically, this corridor is a, it, like, loops around. Um, then I got a note here, so that was, that was handy. Yeah, so, basically, the note is like, yo, Father Martin killed someone here, and there's a bunch of files and shit. Um, they look like government agency, yeah, the, the old documents that are, and the buzzing won't stop. So I think Miles is hearing buzzing. As I look around here for batteries, but there aren't any. 
Because, you know, fuck. Fuck that shit, am I right? Okay, oh yeah, I need to reload. I need to reload batteries, guys. <clears throat> this giant hole. Yeah, I think this place is just fucked. So, then I go, okay, cool, and go to the arrow, and notice that shot, and then I press straight away, and I'm like, oh, fuck, they're there. Um, because I think I thought that they would not show up again, but they do. So, what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? And I try and run around to duke him, but then they, obviously, they both go down their own separate corridor and see one, and I'm like, god damn it. Yeah, so that was just me reconfirming. Then I think I um, was going to just try and run past them, even if I got hit once, but they one-hit you, so I was like, well, gee. What I tried to do was go back to the room with all the beds and stuff and hide under the beds, but couldn't hide under the beds. So I was like, well, gee, and tried to run past them again, and bam, stabbed. And I think at this point I was getting kind of pissed off. Because, you know, in any game, if you die lots at one certain thing, I I tend to get pissed off. Then I tried running straight in there. That didn't work, because Tony Abbott killed me. <sighs> then I had one more plan, and that was to run back this way and just hide around here. This little, little thingy area. And... Well, spoilers, it worked. So, I got past them eventually. So that was a plus. I was happy with that. I just saw them went past, and naturally I was like, dad ass, I think. And I just snuck past. And that was, that was, that was it. I walked, didn't run, because I didn't want to make noise to draw attention to myself. And I made it through. Okay. Let's have a quick look around. You know, standard. <clears throat> then I came across this room, obviously. Um, this room was the fucked room. That is fucked and has no floor. I made it! Yay! Okay, cool. So now, now, now we're walking. I have to do a sprint jump and jump and over to the edge. And this is the part where I lose my camera. So this is the only part that I remember happening. Um, I didn't remember how to get to the camera or whatever. Some dude came through that door. Um, yeah, and I was like, oh well, gee. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, I tried to progress through the game without the camera. But then it's like, yo, you need it. You need it. You need it. You need a camera, man. You need it. You need to keep it, man. And I was like, oh man. So yeah, there we go. Um, so I had to jump down here, jump down here. Still freaking out about that person that I saw who opened the door, because I didn't know where he went. Um, but I couldn't see him, so I was like, well, fuck it, and just kind of walked through. And conveniently for me, everything is pretty well lit up, um, considering how dark everything was not long before. Um, and as always, I fucking explore for batteries and documents and stuff. I see a battery and I get it. This is a, it's the one fucking battery that I find without my camera. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, there was a there was a flash on the screen, and I thought it was a shiny important object of like of a document or something, but I don't know. I don't know what it was. Um, yeah. So walking through a locker room, locker shower area. I don't know what to call it. Oh shit. Um. <laughs> then I decide, hey, oh, the shower's on, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Showers aren't meant to be on when you're not in them. Then I continue my quest to try and find someone in the shower or in the bathroom, in the toilet, trying to trying to find them, catch them pooping, so I can be like, huh, you poop, and then I'm like, fuck off, man. And then you know, naturally, I don't find anyone, and I'm like, god damn it. Um, so I jump down a hole instead. Yeah. And then I get stuck because I didn't crouch, and I was like, "God damn it!" I don't really know what to say in these uh, post commentaries because I'm just kind of 
trying to explain my thought process or um, what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know, man. So I, c I continue trying to find a thing. Peep around the corner because I'm paranoid as fuck because I don't have light. There's a person running and it's always scary. It's always scary when people run. And, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> peep around the corner again because this is the way the person went. So I was like, well, can't fucking gonna be careful. But I wasn't careful enough. That jump scare got me. <laughs> Uh, good times, good times we have here. Um, yeah. Uh, I think here I started to try and explore for batteries and stuff. Um, but obviously I couldn't see because I don't have my camera, so I kind of gave up and was like, yeah, just, just follow the light, man, just follow the light. Which is, you know, what you're supposed to do. They might have, they might, I might have missed documents and stuff, but... I think at this point I was like, I just want my camera, man. Um, I see that light thing over there, but at first I was like, ha I don't want to go through the dark, man. And I also got stuck because I wasn't crouching. Um, but that's where my camera is, so I ended up going there, obviously. Um, but I couldn't get it from that side, so I had to go around, and it's like, what the fuck, bro? Ah, jeez. I got it. You're find a way to the third floor. Um, I think I was just gonna be like, yeah, go back the way I came. Then turn the camera on. Night vision. It's people there, and I'm like, fuck. I did it. Yo, I fucking did it. I got to where I had to be, turn on the light, couldn't get up a ledge, and now I have to find Father Martin in the administration block. And there's a hole here. There's always a fucking hole. This place that we're in is fucked. And that there, I exclaimed, was the start of the video. Um, yeah, when I did have the mic recorded. <sighs> I'm actually really annoyed at myself for doing that. Oh yeah, here. This part. So here, let me explain what I was trying to do. Well, first of all, I'd go around the side to see if there's anything there. Which there isn't, so, yeah. And then here, if you see that giant, that big wooden beam to the left, or just in front of you, I try to walk on it, but then this happens. It hasn't got mass. So instead, I spawn because that's what you can do. I just fucking do a sprint jump thing. And there's a guy there, and I'm like, oh man. I didn't explore behind me. I should have explored behind me. Oh yeah, and like every time that um, camera freaks out because it's broken, um, it scares Only me a little bit because, because you know, it's scary, you know sudden face? thing, jump scares and shit. So here I am running. I think I was like, oh, this place is nice. Maybe not. I don't remember now. Squeeze the real place. Um, I think. Chris Walker shows up here, and I'm surprised by it. Um, I don't remember now. Yeah, Chris Walker does show up. After I go in this room and kind of explore aimlessly, exclaiming how, oh, it's a nice room, it's not fucked up, like maybe a bit of furniture's moved around, but apart from that, it's fine. It's fine, it's a fine room, it's mighty fine, motherfucker. But I don't find anything, so I'm sad about that. Um, so, yeah, I, I leave. Leave. Shit. Uh, and then Chris Walker's there, and I'm like, well, fuck. Um, I had no idea where to go. I assumed I had to go down here, but then I was blocked. The reason why I assumed I had to go down there was because there was a dark room. But then I was like, well, maybe I go where he came from, which I assumed was there. But it wasn't, and he caught up with me. And then I you know, managed to get away from him because he doesn't fucking one shot kill me like those uh, the brothers or whatever they're called. And then in here I see the vent, but Chris Walker kills me. So I'm like, well, fuck. So, in my second attempt, I have a bit more of a strategy, and that is to uh, just run straight to the room. Um, 
be like, fuck you, Chris Walker. Actually, uh, apparently let him in here. Because I think I thought this was the room, but then it wasn't the room, so... Yeah, this is the room with the open door. So instead of exploring a bit, I was like, fuck it, went straight in the vent. Um, and we're at the part where the dead body is at the end of the vent. Um, but, as you can see, I go to the right here. And I find exactly that, a document! Yay! Um, but, maybe I could have gotten in here without it, without the vent? I don't know, but, summary of the document. So, in this document, it's basically saying the whoever was interesting conversation with Billy. Um, Billy talks about some delusions and medications and shit. Um, his dead doctor is filling his head with more German folklore. So, apparently, um, Billy talks about German folklore and about the butterfly, vampire butterflies. Vomited, yeah, vampire butterflies vomited from a demon called Her Cry. The butterflies suck the breath from people's lips and drink the blood from the nipples. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Um, and says some other random shit as well. Um, then he, they mentioned that Billy had tattoos, oh, his mum had tattoos, I should say. Um, and that the Dr. Man was gonna you know, look at, look on the internet, what they mean and stuff, and then, um, what, if they are butterfly tattoos, what they might mean. Then, over the page, they're like, yo, uh, hey, babe, uh, let's, let's compare notes over a glass of wine, and then they sex it up, probably, but probably not, they probably die. So, let's just close this document, did it, okay. Now I'm jumping back up to the vent to get to the dead body man, and then, Apparently had a quick look back. So I made it to the dead body man. His neck is fucked seemingly. I just push him. I thought I was gonna kick him, but I pushed him. And he just jumped down. Jumped down my ass, god damn it. Okay, there we go. And it's saving. Um pull out my camera so I can get all the notes ever. Um, that was a thing that I tried to explain at some point because I wanted to have the camera wanted to have the camera recording as often as I could so I could um get any of the mile, miles notes or whatever um, in the hopes of getting all of them but that spoilers that didn't happen so whatever man I'm mad um yeah this is the library thing here that I had a quick look around um, but I didn't see anything. I might have. The door that was broken. I might have missed something. That's very likely. Um, then I was like, fuck it, and left. Um, then over here, there's this dude that comes down the stairs and yells at me um, to get a key that is, in the, oh god, um, behind the light in the theater. Oh god, burping. Sorry, I was having to. Um, retrieve the key from the recreational hall. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, thanks, guy. Yes, coming. I'm coming. Um, so, yeah, that's what I do. Try and get in here, because that's, that's the thing. Um, and I follow the blood, apparently. And there's a pool table. So many pool tables in this place from memory. It's ridiculous. I, I accidentally found the correct way to go. I think I was coming here because I thought it wasn't the correct way to go. Um... I think I thought it was just a way where maybe a document or something would be, but I ended up going this way and it was the correct way and I just kept going and wasn't wasn't bothered to get back. Um Yeah, and there was oh there was a nice piano music playing. You can hear it, I'm assuming. I haven't got my headphones on, I should probably put them on, but whatever. Um Yeah, there's a nice piano music playing and I'm like, oh this is nice bro, this is nice. Climbing up a ladder. Oh. And then there's a ledge for me to climb across. After I look around, obviously. And then I jump off. Cool. There's an exit, but it's locked because, you know, he wants to leave. Everyone wants to leave, but they can't because. Fuckers. And here's a dude playing the piano, and I accidentally disturbed him. And yeah, and then he looks at me creepily. Light from under him, and he's like, nah, nah, mate, nah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, 
So naturally, I move on. I think at this point, I was probably... I know lately, for the last few recordings, definitely, I was very much like, Hey, I just want to I just want to finish the recordings, man. I don't care too much, but I do. Um, yeah, and then I'm in the rec hall. And then something happens, apparently. Oh, yeah, that light. It scares the fuck out of me. Um, yeah. Um, basically, what it is, is it's a movie playing. Um... With an interview with someone, so I'll just let that play out for you guys. There was no alteration to the footage at all, no trickery. None. In June of 1943, you recorded three instances of spontaneous bleeding. A half a dozen test subjects began to develop brain tumors. Yes. The autopsies revealed that the tumors were pure lead. It killed them. Can you explain why the results could not be reproduced in the United States? I have my theories. My homeland, those years. It's impossible to understand the things we felt, what we believed. The overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage, and English words are insufficient. More than hope. The human mind in that environment is capable of extraordinary things. You're saying the experiment needed... The proximity to death. To overwhelming madness. Only a test subject who had witnessed enough horror was capable of activating the engine. Do you believe your test subjects achieved something supernatural? No. Do you think that they contacted something supernatural? Nothing is supernatural. Then what was it? You said Project Wallrider was a gateway. A gateway to what? And then he didn't answer. And I was like, God damn it! And, and stuff. Um, but basically what that was, was an interview with the German dude who came here. From, from here being America. Um, and that's what this note is. It's basically explaining what it is. So it was... Basically, only test subjects who go through some sort of ridiculous trauma are good for whatever the fuck they're testing. Um, it says here, only a test subject who had witnessed enough horror was capable of activating the engine, the morphogenic engine. Um, so becoming the war rider or something. <coughs> oh god. Okay, so I'm like, hey, I need to get behind in that projector thing. Um, so naturally, I go to where the light leads me. Um, and oh, oh yeah, I think I started to get past the door or something. That shadow looks like a dick. Anyway, that shuts, and I was like, "Oh man!" And then the guy talks to me. You have to find Wernicke. That's how you say it. That's how you say it. Wernicke. Oh man. Even by the end of the game, I didn't know how to say it. Until just now, after I finished the game. Spoilers. Yeah, oh my god. Anyway, that was, that was a thing. Wernicke. Um, yeah, I think I came up here because I didn't think it was the uh, way I was meant to go yet. Um, or maybe I did. I don't know. I just want to get behind in the projection room and um, get the key because that's what I was told to do. So naturally, I did that. But... That freaked me out. <laughs> I said, oh man, and then tried to get in there again. I like how they wobble their head though. It's kind of funny. They're like, freak out, and then wobbling their head. And I see him run through there. I'm like, oh shit, yo. And there's a there's a doorway here that I don't think I saw um, before. And stuff. And there's broken, and there's a ledge. So I go on the ledge. And jump! Yeah, cool. So Mandeleva, key's right there on the bench, next to a dead guy. Um, then, I believe I talked about the fact that I used to, when I worked at a cinema, uh, for my last, I want to say, uh, probably 10 months or something there, I was, um, I was a projectionist, so that was cool. I got to got to do projectiony shit. 
The only difference was we didn't have film when I learnt it. Um, we were all digital, so it was a lot. It was a lot easier, but the problems were different problems. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's me explaining what one of the problems are, but whatever. Um, then I came to this room, which apparently had a document here. Um, I think it was just a small document. Uh, I don't remember what it says. There we go. Oh yeah, I was really confused by it. It says, wash your hands regularly because of flesh-eating bacteria. And I was like, what? Really? I fucking quit. I fucking quit, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it said. And I was, I was confused by it because it was formatted weirdly. Um, and I think this door's locked. Yeah, it's locked. And I was like, what? But that's the obvious way to go. But it wasn't. Um, so what I had to do now is go find Father Martin, um, back on the third floor where that guy was like, yo dog, you need to, you need to find the key behind the thing. That's, that's the door that unlocks. Um, but, but motherfuckers come. <coughs> I think you can hear a door banging. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the door banging. I'm like, oh shit. You can, you can see it. So, yeah. I try and find a place to hide, but I can't. It's really sad. And I think I assumed it was Chris Walker as well. Um, but this isn't the Chris Walker music. And I noticed, I noticed this after the, word, the fact um, that Chris Walker, the Wall Rider, and the two brother people all had their own music for when they're chasing you, which I thought was really cool. Um, Red Barrel, I think they're going, oh my God, doing well with their game. Um, but I think at this point, this very point in the recording, I'd, I was still unaware. I just assumed it was Chris Walker. And I turn on my night vision and see a very faint glow of eyeballs. And, yep, it's not Chris Walker. I'm like, well, fuck. Um, and some naked dude. So many naked dudes. And I sneak past him, so it's okay. Spoilers! I sneak past him! Spoilers! Spoilers! I'm sorry for all the spoilers, man. It's hard. I think I was just very lucky with the sneaky thing, because, yeah. <laughs> um, but I got past. I think it was only one of the two brothers, rather than both. I think if it was both, that would have made it so much fucking harder. Um, then I shut that to be like, fuck you. Okay. What is this place? I don't remember this place. It's just an empty room, just trying to establish the setting, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, um, I turn around to you, and I'm back at the place where I need to be, so. And the music is still happening, apparently. Okay, there we go, just stopped. Oh, yeah, that guy's there. And naturally, I look at him, because. I don't know. He had blood all over him, I just realized. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So I'm making it up the stairs. It's saving, apparently. I'll try and go through here, but spoilers! I can't, because it's locked, because that guy's a jerk. Um. And I think I take a note of the spooky sounds. Spooky! Spooky scary! This is another moment where I was like, I want all the things. And then this guy, I think I assumed this guy was uh, Father Martin or someone who would speak to me. But then he wasn't, and I was like, well, gee. He didn't, he didn't speak at me, and I got sad. But, oh well. Then here... Is it this place? I think it's this place. Um, there's organs. I think I'd take note of the organs. There are organs playing. Um, gives it a very churchy feel. That guy's praying. Um, and I take note of it. Um, the static again, a patient knelt in prayer. Maybe brought here by Father Martin's bullshit. He is the same thing I hear, but more clearly, I uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, it's just questioning why he's praying, basically. Um, and, yeah, I want to play pool. 
the spooky sounds. And the spooky me is spooky. Okay, so we are up to this place. So this place, basically, um, I think I'm gonna speed my way through it. <coughs> um, but basically, it's a corridor of rooms with people praying at their beds. Um, and I thought it was weird. Where's my little? Okay, there it is. Um, naturally, I check the bathroom to see if there's any anyone in there that can scare me because they're in a bathroom. But yeah, this corridor here is um, just a corridor of people praying. No one like jumps at me and scares me, and there's just I don't know. It's like it's kind of like they're showing being like, "Hey, it's a cult almost," and I'm like, "Well, fuck." And these. Yeah, and, um, one of the rooms, though, um, I find, a uh, broken or open window or something, I don't remember now. I don't remember if it was broken or open. Um, but I was able to go through it, basically. And, um, you know, that's, that's the way I have to go, so that's the way I'm going, and it's spooky. And, lightning happened at some point, um, freaked me the fuck out. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a note that, a uh, document that I did find, though. Here it is, here, um, please like me, war rider, oh, it's basically that it seems to be, um, I don't know, some, one of these people praying, being like, yo, war rider, kill me, and stuff, um, or something, I don't know. <laughs> Then eventually I was like, fuck it, let's just go out the window. But I was really paranoid about falling off because I didn't want to fall off and die, obviously. Because um, that, that would have been annoying. And I see this person praying, so I'm like, I'm going to go over there! And here I am. There's another dude praying, as I said. Um, I'm going to get in. And I was like, well, cool. God hates sickness. Ah, oh, it says sickness. I don't think I realized what it said when I first looked at it. Um, so that's the thing. Then, um, yeah, the, the, the dude shut the door and I was like, well. Um, then around the corner up here is God hates uh, money. God hates money. And I was like, fair enough. That's fine. That's fine. Well, that I hate money, but you know, it's useful for things. And God hates. No, God always provides a way, is what it says here. Um, this guy is blocking the way, so I can't go up there. But then I turn to him right, and the two brothers are there, and I'm like, what the fuck? Why are these guys here in their nakedness? And that guy's touching himself, and it's like, well. And they don't kill me, thankfully. So I go in, and here's Father Martin on the cross. My job. You alone shall escape the Talva. This is your penultimate act of witness. The promise of the prophets was always freedom from death. And, and here it is. You will watch and record my death, my resurrection. And together we will be free. You are no longer in any danger. I fixed the elevator. It will take you to freedom. We will all of us be free. Now, my son. Yeah. So that that was. That was that thing. I, I think simply I was waiting here for the uh, a note to happen, and it did. So there we go. Um, yeah. So basically, the note is saying like comparing. Yeah, the passion of Father Martin. It can. It's basically comparing Father Martin's death to Jesus's death, and saying it's more shitty um, because he went on on flyer. And stuff. Yes. Close. 
So yeah, I needed to find a way out. Those guys had shut the door, so I was like, oh fuck. I can't go there, I bet. And um so I was like, oh, and tried to find another way out, but you can't you can't get past any of the pews or and stuff. You can't actually get to over there. So I think I eventually yeah, I well, I don't think I know. I eventually went up to the doors to try and open the doors to see if it was locked, just to you know, reconfirm, but then they open it as you see here. And I'm like, oh thanks guys. Cause they become bros. They're just bros. They go from trying to kill you to get your liver and shit to bros, they open doors for you. So that guy has stopped blocking the way, so naturally I go the way that he was blocking and go into this vent. And that was where I called the episode. So Yeah. Um sorry again guys about the me being dumb and deleting the mic. Um Hopefully it won't happen again. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed anyway. Leave a like if you did. Remember to stay luscious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Aren't you scared? Well, that's just fine!